Hey, welcome back. It would be a good idea if you watch a tutorial titled Bounding Box Prediction on my channel before watching this one. But here is a quick recap. I have taken the feature map of size 13 by 13. In my previous tutorials, I call it high level feature map. But whatever I will explain applies to feature maps of other sizes as well. Let's say that our object of interest has a center that falls in one of the grid cell. The center here in this slide is shown using yellow dot. Let me zoom on the grid cell where the center of our object is. You can see that the x unit to the grid cell in the quotient is indicated using cx and the y unit to the grid cell is indicated using cy. And the YOLO v2 paper taught us that instead of directly predicting the coordinates of the center of the box, it would be a good idea to predict the offsets to the center within the grid cell. That is, we want to predict Tx and Ty that are offsets from the boundaries of the grid cell. And the size of the grid cell is 1. So we want that Tx and Ty to be constrained between 0 and 1. This means that the final center x and y for the grid cell that we will end up having is given by bx equals cx plus dx and for y coordinate by equals cy plus dy. But it's not as simple as it sounds. You see the neural network is going to predict real numbers for tx and ty. That is they can take any real value. Whereas what we want is something that lies between 0 and 1 or Tx should be constrained between 0 and 1 and so should Ty. And this is why to constrain the values that we get between 0 and 1, we would pass the value of Tx and Ty to a sigmoid function. Sigmoid function takes a real value and squishes it between 0 and 1 depending on its magnitude and the sign. And this is what was shown in the YOLO v2 paper. But there is a little problem with this setup. Imagine that the x coordinate of the bounding box was at the start of this grid cell. It's not within the grid cell. In other words, we want regression offset for the x coordinate to be 0. But then in order to get 0 from the sigmoid function, you better have Tx which is a large negative number. Here is a code snippet to illustrate the point. As you can see that you will get a zero only when the value is fairly a large negative value. And this will be a bit problematic or challenging for our neural network to do. And it is not just about Tx. What if the y regression offset was expected to be zero? Same problem again. As you can see that I have moved the center of the bounding box to the upper boundary of the grid cell. The problem is there when the center is on the rightmost side of the grid cell. In other words, we want the regression offset for the x coordinate to be 1. But for this, the sigmoid function will give you a value of 1 when your network has a large value for Tx. And stuff would be similar for Ty as well. And this is a problem that was addressed in YOLO v4 paper published in 2020. This is a gem of a paper and the effort that the authors made by conducting various experiments are really interesting and provide good insights. One set of their experiments fall in a category they call bag of freebies. Essentially, what could we do during training with minimal or no extra computation added during the test? Meaning it does not affect your frames per second. And as part of bag of free bees, they solved this grid sensitivity problem. The problem that I illustrated earlier, where if your center of the bounding box is on the walls of the grid cell, it is called a grid sensitivity problem. You can see that they are also talking about that how predicting the high Tx and Ty absolute values is going to be a challenging thing in order to accomplish or resolve the grid sensitivity problem. The solution they propose is to multiply the result of the sigmoid function with a hyperparameter greater than 
But this paragraph is not very clear. So let me provide some visual aids to explain it. This is our current formulation for the BX. Uh, you should understand it by now. And if my recap was not sufficient, then please do watch the bounding box prediction tutorial. As you can see, I'm calling it an old formulation. The authors of YOLO V4 paper are suggesting to modify the equation something like this. The alpha here is a hyperparameter. And I've done a slight simplification of it. Just replace the half by 0 0.5. Nothing has changed really. It's the same formulation. Just, a, just wrote it a little differently. And now if you pay attention, you can see that if I use alpha to be 1, then it gives me the old formulation. The third term will vanish because 1 minus 1 is 0. And the second term will come back to just sigmoid of Tx. However, if you use the value of alpha to be 2, the, in the equation will simplify to Cx plus 2 sigmoid of Tx minus 0 0.5. Essentially, by doing this, we have changed the offset space from 0 to 1 to negative 0 0.5 to 1.5. And this is what you will see in majority of the YOLO implementations. In the source code, the line looks magical because there is no context around it. There is no comment which says that this is grid sensitivity solution and or here is the original equation or I am using an alpha uh, as a hyperparameter whose value is 2. You know, sometimes it's a good idea in the source code to write these comments. Else, the line will always be a bit mystical. And the same thing is happening in many other implementations of YOLO, whether they are the copies of YOLO v5 repository by other people and or YOLO v7 and many other implementations. Essentially, they all are using the value of alpha to be 2. And obviously, it is natural to wonder why alpha should be equal to 2. What is so special about it? Could it take another value? And yes. And turns out there is nothing special about it. It is just a way to constrain the offset space between negative 0 0.5 to 1.5. If you use another value, you would constrain it differently. Here is a thread where Alexi, the author of YOLO v4, is showing various experiments he conducted with different values of alpha. By the way, you should be able to see that you could choose different values of alpha for different feature maps. However, in the implementations, that you see out there, the open source implementation, whether it's YOLO v5, 7, and others, you would always see the value of 2 hard-coded uh, in the source code. And it is used for all feature maps. And all that is what I wanted to share about this problem of grid sensitivity and its elimination. By the way, as Glenn from Ultralytics is mentioning here in this thread, eliminating is perhaps a strong word. Most likely, we have reduced its impact using this clever workaround by changing the offset space. Hope you find this tutorial helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and comments, and I would try my best to answer them. I wish you good luck in your learnings. See you in another tutorial. Bye-bye.